So the programs you're going to need are VTFEdit and GIMP. They're both free programs, you can download them right off the internet. Now we're going to go get an image. I'm going to get one from lapfox.net. Try to get the biggest version of the image you can. Then just save image as. Choose a file name, and save it in some place where you can remember. I'm choosing desktop. And here it is. Then we're going to open it with GIMP. Now we're going to begin the editing process. As you can see here, there's a small logo. Simply choose the color white, the pencil tool, and a solid brush. And just paint over it. Next, we're going to get rid of the white background. Choose the selection tool and select the white background. Make sure to add an alpha channel so we can have transparency. Then hit Control X. The selection tool will leave some residue behind, but there's a very simple way to fix this. Right click the layer and choose Alpha to Selection. Then go to the Selection tab and shrink the image by one pixel. Then you invert the selection by hitting Ctrl I. Then hit Ctrl X. Now you can see the edges are nice and clean. Now we're going to create a black outline. Select the image as you did before, and grow the selection by 2 pixels. Now create a new layer. Hit OK, and move this new layer below your image. Make sure the color black is selected. Choose the bucket fill tool, and fill the selection. You may need to apply some touch-ups to your image. Make sure your image is selected, and select the Erasure tool. Change the size to 1, and simply erase parts that were left behind. Now merge the two layers together by right-clicking the top image and selecting Merge Down. This will turn them both into one layer. Next, we're going to clean up the image by doing a Gaussian Blur. You're going to have to adjust the settings for your own picture, but I find that 65 works best. The radius has 5 works best for this image as well. Make sure the preview isn't too blurred. If it is, try lowering the settings. Now you can see that our black outline has been merged into the image very nicely. You'll also notice that a lot of the pixelated material in the image has been removed as well. Next, create a drop shadow. The defaults usually work just fine, but I like to change the offsets to 10. Now you can see that we've created a nice drop shadow around the image. Now we're going to add transparency to our spray. Transparency is created using channels. Here is where we are going to add channels. Channels determine how transparent certain parts of the image are. First we are going to select the image using alpha to selection. Then we are going to create a channel at 100% transparency. Make sure the channel is selected. Then hit Ctrl X in order to remove the selected portion of the channel. Otherwise, your entire image will be transparent. Now we are going to go back and select the shadow. Seeing that parts of the shadow are transparent, it will create a feathered selection. Now go back to your channel and hit Ctrl X. Parts of your channel will become translucent because of the feathered selection. Now we're going to create another new channel. We're going to set this one to 50% transparency. For organizational purposes, move it below your first channel. Seeing as this channel is going to make our shadow translucent, we're only going to want to cover the shadow, 
so make sure the shadow is selected. Invert the selection to select everything but the shadow. You can do this by hitting Ctrl I. Make sure your channel is selected, then hit Ctrl X to remove that portion of the channel. As you can see, this channel is also covering portions of our image. This isn't good, seeing that it will make these portions of our image transparent. We're going to remove the portions of the channel that are covering our image. First, select the alpha of your image, then select your channel, then hit Ctrl X to remove that portion of the channel that is selected. The editing portion of your spray is now complete. Now we're going to crop our image so it can be used as a spray. Sprays must be either 256 pixels wide and tall, or 512 pixels wide and tall. TF2 allows the larger image size, but certain source mods are not capable of supporting such large images. If you plan on making this spray for only Team Fortress 2, I recommend you use 512. First we need to square the image. You can do this by selecting image, then selecting canvas size. Select the lower of the two numbers, then make it equivalent to the higher one. Center the image, then hit enter. Now we are going to scale the image to 512. Click image, then click scale image. Enter 512 into one of the two boxes, then hit enter twice. Now we're going to export our image. Select file, then export. Choose the file name, then export as a TGA file. We're going to open this TGA file with VTF edit later in the tutorial. Open VTF Edit, then open your TGA file that you created in GIMP. Once you do this, you're going to be prompted with an options menu. Click Advanced, and go to Versions. Make sure 7.4 is selected. Next, click the Options tab and make sure Automatically Create VMT File is selected. The VMT file is responsible for telling Source Games attributes about your spray, such as transparency. Now we are going to put this spray right inside of the spray folder of our game. It might be hard to find this folder, but I'll put the folder location in the video description for Team Fortress 2. For other games that you do not know the location of the spray folder, it's easier simply to save the spray file to your desktop or other known file location, then import the VTF file into the game like you would any other spray. Here I am saving it to my desktop so I may import it into the game normally.